Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of Commission Factory Partner Talks. Uh, I am Alberto, Publisher Development Team Lead, and today with me we have Matt from Prada. How are you, Matt? Doing really well, Alberto. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. And Gary from Pocketball. How are you, Gary? Fantastic. It's Friday afternoon, so we're looking forward to the weekend. To the weekend, definitely, definitely. So today we are going to chat with Gary and with Matt about Carlin King, Carlin King Offering, and Pocketball and Prada. So we would like to start asking you how Carlin King Offering works. I have my credit card. How can I get access to the offers powered by Farler and PocketPile? Yeah, totally. So card linking is a type of rewards experience where the name is quite prescriptive, but the, the rewards are directly connected to an existing debit or, or credit mm -hmm. card that you have. And what this looks like in, in the practical user experience, you'll have some sort of card linking program or consumer experience that you've signed up to. You then link your card. These programs will have a bunch of different merchant offers in them. They'll be across online, they'll be across in store, they might even be small businesses like cafes. And then whenever you use that linked card across any of those merchant offers, you automatically get rewarded mm -hmm. um, cash back. And now the big, the big innovation there for the user is I connect my card to this program and it works seamlessly every time. If you're transacting in store, you don't need to remember to pull out your loyalty card or if think the coffee example is a great one. I remember to have that 10 stamp card before yeah. you get your, your, your 10th coffee free. Um, and the online journeys have typically very been coupon led or click based. So not having to go through that, that journey every time mm -hmm. before making a transaction, knowing that those transactions are directly um, connected to your card as a category, it's it's massive overseas. So if you look to Europe and the US, uh, this is really the next big evolution in marketing. Um, still a fledgling industry in Australia, but we're super excited about it. That's why we're here talking to you guys about it today. Um, it solves a lot of problems for marketeers that uh, don't always get discussed that clearly, but some of the really exciting ones for us have been around that in-store experience. Mm -hmm. So how can I close the loop on someone having a digital or online-led experience and being rewarded in-store? Card linking solves that problem. Another really big one um, that we've got a lot of positive feedback on is around the returns piece. So if you've been working in the affiliate industry, processing returns is an end-of-month kind of headache mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, Card linking tracks returns in real time, both partial and full. So if you buy something from your favorite clothing brand, don't like the dress, whatever you bought, return it 20 days later, uh, that transaction we process as a negative um, reward back to the user, um, mm -hmm. automatically settles up, happens in real time, and there's no need for some clunky reconciliation processes. That's amazing, full of advantages. Gary, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think just the simplicity of it as well for the retailers. And, and we know working with the affiliate platforms, uh, you guys think primarily about the online world, but in the in-store environment as well, it's very simple. I mean, the devices that we, that all the retailers use, we just need the ID for that, and we connect them up seamlessly for them. So it's a very, very unsophisticated for them means of uh, of getting on board. They just give us a, a bunch of IDs and addresses, and mm -hmm. off we go. That's amazing. And now that we know how Carlinkin works and the benefits, how how are Farler and Pokeball working together, and why? Yeah, I, I can start with what Further is. Um, Further's a, a B2C app, so it's directly consumer-led. Um, it's an app-only product at the moment. Um, it's really geared towards that kind of higher income, time-poor, convenience-led experience. Mm -hmm. So we have two, two versions of the app out in market. There's a standard version, everyone can go and download that from the, the iTunes store or the Play Store. Um, then we have a premium version which is targeted towards employees. So we're offering um, a further an employee benefits program and within that uh, there's a you know a monthly fee for employees to, to pay for their employee employers to pay for their employees and for that they get a, a boosted amount of um, mm -hmm. cash back and a slightly um, deeper breadth of merchant offering. That's great. I think I will need to download yeah. the app yeah. after <laughs> the recording. And Gary, what about Pokepal? And we're more of a B2B organization. We power apps like Further, and that's where the partnership began a few months ago, where they've, they've actually migrated from a partner across to our platform. Um, at this stage, we've got 16 publishers that are on the platform. Uh, we reach about 4.5 million consumers with the advertising that goes out through that, and about 650,000 linked cards today that can avail of the, the offers that are going through the, the network. Amazing. Um, yeah. And, and how are you both working together and why? 
Yeah, well, you probably got a sense of it then. Piper Pell are definitely the technical experts mm -hmm. in, the, in this field and our focus has been very much on uh, kind of the merchant or advertiser-led experience. Um, just some of the other bits to, to add on to what Gary was saying. So that, that audience of 4,650,000 card link users, it is a network, but there's no duplication within that network either. Mm -hmm. Each um, card that's registered to a program can only be registered to one of those programs within the network. So it's a truly incremental audience across the group. We're one of those platforms, obviously. Um, further, but yeah, we're, you know, we've, we've got a big background in, in kind of the, the merchant services side of, of marketing the affiliate space, and that's what we're bringing to the ecosystem. So a whole lot of great merchant partnerships, yeah. and then Pocket Pro have this amazing technology platform. Mm -hmm. Great, fantastic. Yeah, from our perspective, we've integrated not only those 16 publishers, but with the card schemes, MasterCard, Visa, FPOS in particular, um, and more recently, open banking data as well to enable us to gather a lot of information on the consumers and serve up the right offers to customers and try and personalize that. That's what we do really well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Perfect. So, Gary, how would you describe uh, Pocket Pal in, in three words, in three objectives? I think we're fast, flexible, and I'd use the, the word automated because what we've tried to do is really simplify things for the companies and the consumers that we work with. Mm -hmm. Our job in many regards is to take steps out of otherwise complicated processes and automate them for people. Um, and we do that in a way that's fast and flexible because not two companies work exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And Matt, what do you think? Yeah, we, would be for further? great question. The first one's empowering. Like we built further to help people do more of what matters to them. And it's not about just getting rewarded on every transaction. Mm -hmm. So if you go into our app, you'll see very clearly defined wallet section. You'll see a transaction history of every reward that's been earned. And you'll see this working towards a common goal. So that goal might be, hey, I want to go on a holiday in six months. It's a bit more expensive than I, what I could afford before. Um, it might be about you know getting a nice present for someone at the end of the year and all these different brands and their little rewards working together, whether that's your morning coffee, mm -hmm. getting a little bit back or maybe a big purchase at someone like the Iconic, getting a really big reward, um, that's what's leading to this common goal. So um, empowering was the first thing we thought of. Um, disruptive, definitely. Uh, we think this mm -hmm. is kind of the next evolution in, in a rewards experience um, and probably pretty similar to Pocket Bell. We like the word simple. It's really easy to use. Really is it, right? Yeah. Amazing. And in terms of the, of the partnership, what do you think that makes the partnership stand out? Like yeah, well, I, like we started working together, obviously, from a technological point of view, but the broader opportunity is around just how big card linking as a category has become. And you can look in international markets. In the US, it's, it's really dominant. Um, lots of huge M&A acquisition, mm -hmm. um, lots of businesses raising really big, big amounts of money. In Australia, it's still still in its fledgling state. Um, we were kind of talking to the market businesses like you guys at the same time, and it just made sense to combine forces. Like we've got really complementary skill sets, um, and there's just a big opportunity to be one, and we're, we're tackling it together. Amazing, Gary. Any? Yeah, I I just think both organisations culturally as well um, is a good fit. We're, we're um, CEO of of further is also an Irish guy, so um, there's lots of cultural likenesses there. But I think just the hustle, um, both organizations love the hustle. I think we, you know, it's a typical day. I'm sure that question you're going to ask, but, uh, you know, typical day, we're hustling each other from probably six in the morning to, <laughs> to nine at night. You know, have, have we got this done and have we got something set up for a retailer? So that, that, goes on all the time and I think it, it really helps both accelerate the growth of the organizations collectively. Perfect. And where do you see the car linking space is going in the next few years? Yeah, really, really good question again. Um, I think the best way to think about it is you think of everyone who has a card at the moment, um, if you go and get a card, you're probably going to get something that has some sort of point scheme attached to it, usually frequent flyers. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the dominant reward space attached to cards. Merchant funded card linked offers, which is what we do, our view would be that in a couple of years time, you're not going to see any cards being issued by the major banks or fintechs without that sort of program um, being offered. And there's a lot of market signals that we have to prove that, like mm -hmm. we're getting 
a huge amount of inbound uh, pocket power working with us. They're launching another publisher every month into the network. That's going to ramp up really soon. And it's all about this card issuing space. So if I'm issuing a card, what's the best possible rewards benefit I can give to my customers? Mm -hmm. And that is definitely merchant funded CLO. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, I'd, I'd just add, I mean, some of the opportunities that we're working on are not brands that you would typically associate with even rewards in the market, but they're, they're brands with five, six million customers. Um, and they're all looking at this as a really great way to engage with their customers in a frictionless experience. So that's what it's all about. And, and we're seeing those volume of consumers adopting this um, they're not all deal seekers, by the way. A lot of these people just want to get, you know, rewards in an easy way, and they're not out hunting for them. They're they're kind of, they want to work with brands that, that value them and will reward them, and we think we do that for them. Mm -hmm. Amazing, perfect. I think you mentioned a bit something about this, but what does a, a typical day at Parler or or Pocketpaw look like? I think for me, it genuinely, it's probably a six or seven o'clock start in the morning mm -hmm. because the phone is not ringing and trying to, <laughs> uh, to, to, get, to get the actions done <laughs> potentially from the previous day. Um, with the team, we have a huddle every morning as a team. We focus really on customer experience. That's number one. If anything's popped up the previous day, it's addressed super quickly and, mm -hmm. and it can't carry on for more than a day. It's got to be closed in that particular day. Um, but we have a roadmap in terms of things we're trying to do, both for customers, but also in terms of evolution of our product. And that's discussed every single day. And, mm -hmm. and even if it's inches, we're trying to move it along on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Everything under control. I wouldn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> <laughs> Hustle and chaos sometimes, but, but it's moving forward, yeah. And what is, yeah, what is this for a pilot? Yeah, really, really similar. Um, early start clear out the inbox as fast as possible. We typically have a series of set meetings each week and they're around functional areas within the business. The hot ones for us at the moment, there's a commercial sales meeting really focused on extending our merchant offering. Um, marketing happens every week as well. And then customer UX, making sure the app's doing what it should do. Beyond that, we're, we're really flat structure as well. There's a, you know, um, there's still a small team. so. Uh, wearing lots of hats as well, so we're in around that. It, it's or, or, organized chaos, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in two words, each of you, uh, what do you think are the main objectives for Farther and PocketPal uh, during the rest of the year? Yeah, for us, um, it's really trying to meet the demands that are coming on board. We see huge inbound demand at the minute. We've got very little, really, capacity to do outbound with the demand that's coming at us. So growth is, is, um, is our primary objective. Um, to do that, we need to hire more people and, you know, and scale the business. Uh, so if I look at it 12 months out, we'll probably be two to three times the size we are now. And that's in every dimension, consumers, partners, and, uh, and staff on, on the team as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very similar. Uh, I think together we want to make sure we continue to be the leading card link destination, and that means the highest um, number of customers and the highest mm -hmm. quality, the highest quality of customer as well. Then also the largest merchant offering. And right now we own that space in the Australian market, so it's kind of just continuing to do more of what we're doing really well together, and uh, kind of become the one-stop shop for these types of programs in the country. There's so much opportunity to be won. Um, and yeah, as Gary said, those sort of that growth trajectory is, is very likely to happen this year. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, now we have a few rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. So, Matt, see. what is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, I probably delayed flights, to be honest. I <laughs> flew up from Melbourne this morning, it was seamlessly on time. But I, yeah, I, I fly a lot domestically for work and um, Jetstar, Virgin, and Qantas, so they can pull their socks up a bit on <laughs> making their flights run on time. <laughs> And, and you, for me, um, I've worked in the telco industry for about 10 or 12 years and nothing drives me nuts worse than being on a call, uh, whether it's a mobile call or a Zoom call where the network's choppy and people are on and off. Oh. It just drives me bonkers. And I can't understand how we can't get that right in Australia, having worked in third world countries. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that feeling, yeah, totally. Uh, second question, so what is your ideal weekend or what, what does it look like, your ideal weekend? Yeah, um, for me, it's 
definitely hopefully sleep in at least one day i've got a, a one-year-old daughter and she she keeps us pretty tired but so if i can get to sleep in that'd be great otherwise plenty of family time i'm with my wife and my daughter and my my dog and then a bit of me time would be maybe a surf down the coast mm -hmm. and torquay area or often more logically it's trip to the wave pool at the airport which is a bit closer mm -hmm. great amazing yeah. Kari. Yeah, I love doing activity stuff, whether that's walking. I mean, tomorrow I've got, um, I've just taken up sailing lessons, so I'm always trying to pick something else up. Um, a few months ago, I, I signed up for some surf lessons, try and keep up on that a little bit, um, and try and squeeze a game of golf in somewhere. There you go, that's that's nice <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's great. And let's talk about food. If you had to eat the same food, or the same dish for the rest of your life, what would it be? This isn't going to be a healthy answer, but it's chicken and chips. Chicken and chips is a fantastic <laughs> yeah. answer. <laughs> I, I approve that. <laughs> and you, Gary? Mine's probably a really spicy Indian curry. Um, lots of variety in there, but you know, I love spicy food, and, and Indian's my favorite. I don't. That's also a great answer. <laughs> and last question: uh, Any travel trips? Uh, like not back to Melbourne? Any any holidays? Any vacations planned? Yeah, actually, you got one, not for a while, towards the end of the year, but surf trip to the Maldives. I can treat myself um, yeah, in November. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So I'm off to Ireland, uh, home country, in about four weeks' time. Um, family weddings and various celebrations around my parents' uh, 60th wedding anniversary. So wow. uh, looking, forward to, um, looking forward to seeing and catching up with all the family at that. Family yeah. time. Also cool. amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Matt. Gary, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it and yeah, thank you. Thanks, yeah, Thanks you. so much, Albert. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.